Hello everybody, it's me Ghost Critic and for my Monday video I thought I'd tag along with uh, Cammy. Reader1717 started a tag video uh, which she said anyone can have a go at it if you fancy and it is the TMI tag. Now for those of you who are not au fait with the slang acronisms of today, TMI is too much information. And she set a series of questions to answer and here is my efforts. Before I start on them, I'll put a link to Cammy's channel in the uh, description bar below so you can go and check out her answers to the questions she posed us all. And uh, hold out till the end of the video because I'm going to put a little bonus comic book haul at the end that I picked up over the weekend. So look out for that. Right, let's start with the first question. And that was, who is your fictional comic book crush? This is difficult because I don't really have a comic book crush, I guess. But if I had to pick someone that I looked up to and wanted to be like, it's kind of a crush, I guess. Um, it would have to be Richard Stark's Parker. Um, he is all the man that I want to be. Um, he's strong, he's confident, he's handsome, he's got that sharp dress sense of the 60s, that kind of madman suited and booted style that I love. He's resourceful, he's cunning, he's fearless, physically fit. Not me. Uh, he takes crap from absolutely no one. And if there's something he wants, he doesn't just go for it, he gets it. Question number two. Ever love a character or a series and then start hating it? Now, I think hate is a bit of a strong word. Um, I, th I always get a new title in the hope that it will be great and that I won't be disappointed but ultimately you know if you've been watching my videos regularly you'll have seen that I dropped a great many of my books of late um, because they just weren't doing it for me anymore um, and in this um, economy that we're in now money can't be just thrown away frivolously um, but if we're looking at kind of books not so much of late, um, I suppose the only one that kind of I had high hopes for and was really interested in getting was Marvel Squadron Supreme, which had that element right at the start that really hooked me and interested me, but eventually just ended up a little bit fluffy and, uh, you know, a little bit of fluff at Marvel that wasn't going anywhere, that was trying to find its place in the, uh, the this new Marvel Now universe after the Secret Wars event, but just couldn't get a handle on what it wanted to do. Um, from a bit further back, um, the days when I was a little bit more stubborn about not dropping books and hoping and hoping they'd get better and better um, was when DC had their new 52. Um, I picked up the new Justice League and uh, Green Lantern. And I was a huge Green Lantern fan before the New 52. Jeff John's last run on that before the New 52 was fantastic. And I recommend anyone to go and um, pick that up in trade or if you're lucky enough, find all the singles. But uh, just a great run. And I expected that again because if I remember rightly, he was still on the book. But it just got a little bit lame, to be honest. And I just lost complete interest. And although I, again, just like Justice League, I probably left it a lot longer than I should have to um, to drop it and save myself some money or buy some better books. But I eventually did. Right then, question three. What is on your pull list? Oh my goodness. Um, if you'd read my Twitter feed lately, I did say that I was a bit confused because 
a lot of my books must be on hiatus because I'm kind of averaging about five or six a week and it used to be so much more. Um, so I thought oh, all my books must be on a break. Um, and it's only when you write down all the titles that you're actually collecting that that kind of makes sense. Um, because once I'd written it down, I was thought I thought to myself, oh my God, do I really get all these books? And I do. So my comic book pull list, it's a long one. Uh, Marvel books, let's kick off with that first. Doctor Strange, Uncanny and Humans, Star Wars, Extraordinary X-Men, Daredevil, Silver Surfer, The Punisher, Moon Knight, Black Widow and Powers. From DC, we've got Clean Room, Astro City, The Flash, Wonder Woman, and although it's not on my pull list, it's always on the shelf and I just seem to be always picking it up, Dark Knight 3, The Master Race. Uh, from the smaller companies like uh, Boom Studios, um, Aftershock and uh, Dark Horse, um, there's The Woods, uh, Black Eyed Kids, Conan the Slayer and Department H. Now as you can imagine, Image Comics is the big bulk of my pull list. Deep breath. Okay, Morning Glories, Trees, Descender, Lazarus, Black Science, East of West, Deadly Class, Odyssey, Low, Stray Bullets, Saga, They're Not Like Us, Autumn Lands, Monstrous, Paper Girls, I Hate Fairyland, Seven to Eternity, Kill or Be Killed, Black Monday Murders, and again, although it's not technically on my pull list as yet, it probably will be, and that is the latest Mark Miller, Greg Capullo's Reborn. That's my comic book pull list. Question number four. What is on my to-be-read pile? Now, that's quite a stack. Not only have I have got this big pile of back issues uh, to get through that I've been collecting of late or just haven't got round to uh, finishing off, there is a lot of trades and the problem that I have with trades is that I buy so many of them and they kind of get higher and higher and the older ones kind of not get left behind because I obviously still want to read them but because I'm so excited about the new things I've got, I read them first. So there's stuff in here that I've had for quite a while, um, and I just haven't got round to reading. And another reason that I don't get round to reading them is because I reread old trades. Again, if you've been watching my uh, Twitter feed uh, and listening to my past videos, you'll be you'll know that I am rereading Neil Gaiman's The Sandman at the moment. So I'm up to volume six, which is Fables and Reflections. Uh, I can't even count how many times I've read and reread this. It's always uh, a firm favourite, if not my favourite, comic book series of all time. Uh, there's a couple of um, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips criminal books, uh, Bad Night and The Sinners that I've still got on my bedside table that I've yet to read. Um, I got bought this from uh, my partner who obviously was looking on my Amazon wish list but didn't look at it properly to be honest. Um, it's great to have but I've got the fourth volume of Grant Morrison's uh, Invisibles, the deluxe edition. The problem is I haven't got volume two and three yet. I've got volume one, which I've read. So I'm gonna have to buy myself two and three so then I can read issue four. Um, I'm making my way through this gorgeous tomb of Sleeper, another Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. It's the big omnibus once again. Nice big, nice big hardback. And finally, um, the Goon, the library edition. This is uh, weighing my bedside cabinet down. It's a big heavy tomb, but just a great series that I've loved since I decided to pick it up. And that's all thanks to Tim Howlermouse, who is always going on about how great the Goon is. And I finally took the plunge and I'm ever grateful to him. Question number five. 
A comic book series that got cancelled, ended, that you wished would have continued. Um, I guess uh, more recently, uh, so let's say this year gone by, um, after the Secret Wars event, uh, some of the books made it into the, the regular Marvel U. And although it only lasted six issues, uh, Sam Humphreys and Del Mundo's A Weird World was just a great book. Not just visually to look at, but Sam Humphreys was just about to get there with the whole character and the universe. He just didn't get the chance to continue with this and make it something really, really good because there was a lot of emotion in this book. Again, there was a lot of action and adventure. As the title says, it was very weird. Um, but I just don't think probably enough people were buying it and Marvel weren't willing, I guess, to give it the chance to grow and mature into something that maybe, you know, could have got some memento going, could have got really exciting and, and become something that everybody wanted to read, but unfortunately not. Um, An issue that lasted twice as long um, to 12 issues was uh, over at DC and that was Midnighter. I know there's a new mini series, Midnighter on Apollo, but there was just something missing with that title and I've only just read the first issue and I'm not going to go on with that one but this series was just Midnight on his own was just fantastic I enjoyed it from start to finish Echo's art on this was very dynamic visually playing around with panels structure uh, and page layout it was just really really exciting and I look forward to reading this every month in and out um, but again probably one of those titles that didn't sell all that well, um, but it was nice to have Midnight around at least 12 issues. Penultimate question. Have you ever spent money on comics that you could have spent on something more necessary? Oh, shall we go to a dark place? Let's go back to 2005. Um, I got in debt. I got in such heavy, heavy debt. And I have to be honest, it was it was really all down to comics. I just really did not have the expendable cash to buy as much as I was buying. So I was putting things on credit cards and getting loans and the like and I got myself into some shit I'll tell you now um, and in 2005 right at the end of the year I had to bite the bullet I had to stop being in denial that this was ever going to go away and I just with, with like a heavy heavy heart I had to walk into my local comic book store and the manager of it at the time and say to him look I'm really, really sorry, but I'm going to have to cancel my pull list. I just, I've got bills to pay and I just got to stop buying comics. I've got to go cold turkey. Um, and I've got to be honest, it was uh, the walk home. My comic book store is literally 10 minutes tops away from my house, but it just seemed like hours to get back home because I was so saddened that day. It was it was a big wrench for me because, you know, comics are such a huge thing in my life uh, and it's almost taken over my life and my flat. Um, but I just came home and I'm not ashamed to say a tear fell down that day, down my cheek. I was just like, that's it, I'm never going to buy any new comics ever again. Um, fortunately, about a year or so, just over a year later, uh, good news did come my way, I guess kind of. Um, my my mother had died some years before um, and I got this letter out the blue and it was uh, a policy, an insurance kind of policy and they'd been looking for the next of kin, obviously of my mother, which was me and I, the money that was in that insurance policy, I managed to pay off all my debts I was back straight and I have a more level head now on um, 
buying comics, how much I can afford to buy, uh, and and when to stop, when to say you can't, you just can't keep going on buying a comic that you just buying for the sake of it now to maybe complete a collection, complete a run. Uh, and I've got to be more savvy about the bargains I buy. Uh, and it, and, I, and it is, has been a big lesson learned. Uh, I'm not saying that I haven't been bad again since then. Um, there's been some slips, but nowhere near how bad it was back in 2005. Um, there, they were some dark, dark times before any of you even knew me. And finally, the last question from my dear Cammy: Has a comic book ever made you cry? Oh, Cammy, I cry at anything. I'm an absolute wuss. Um, comic books, okay, not so much. Films, TV, weird things like standing ovations, they make me weepy. I don't know why, even if the person doesn't really deserve it. People standing up and cheering get me kind of there, and I'm like, this is sweet. And I start, and I just don't know where it comes from. Um, but the one comic that I believe, whenever I read it, I always shed a tear towards the end because it's just so emotional and resonates so much um, with my life. Um, when I'm ever feeling down, work shit, I feel like life's not going anywhere, it's not exciting enough, I read this book and I'll pick a, a chapter or a storyline from it uh, and reread it. And it just, although the book's all about potentially death, it's very life affirming and I may not always follow through with what the message in the book is, it kind of makes me feel like there is hope and uh, the tears of sadness turns into almost tears of joy. Uh, many people will already know what I'm talking about because I've spoken about this book so many times. If I could buy every single one of my subscribers a copy of this who already didn't have it, I would because I think it's just a fantastic piece of work in its own right. It's the Maxi series from um, Fabio Moon and Gabriel Barr. Day Tripper. Read it. It's... If you don't feel something. I'm not talking about crying, but if you don't feel something over this book, then you have no heart. That's all I can say. Okay, that's it for the tag video. Thank you very much for creating that, Cami. Um, I had a lot of fun um, answering those questions and giving you all a little bit too much information, perhaps. Uh, just to finish this video off, I got a small comic book haul that I just wanted to show off. Um, over the weekend, just popped into town, dropped in on the comic book store to go back to those um, very cheap boxes just in case I'd missed anything. I just, I've just been paid, so I just thought, oh, I'll spend maybe 20 quid. What's 20 quid? Um, and I came out with some books. So the first lot are just kind of fun stuff that I just thought, oh, what the hell, let's let's get them. They'll be a, a fun read. And then the last uh, kind of batch of them are filling in gaps in some of the runs that I want to complete. So firstly, a few issues of What If from Marvel. Uh, they are all based on the Punisher. So the Punisher's, uh, what if the Punisher's family hadn't died? Oh, sorry, hadn't been killed. Uh, what if the Punisher had killed Daredevil? And what if the Punisher became Captain America? Um, what year were these come out? So we're talking 1993. Um, we have seen since then the Punisher don the uh, Captain America suit, much to the annoyance of a lot of the uh, superheroes at the time. Um, I caught this, which I thought was kind of fun. It's um, Batman uh, Legends of the Dark Knight Annual from 1991. Great Mike Minola cover on there. 
um, called Duel and it's got loads of artists and writers in there. Denny O'Neill, Jim Apro, there's also um, Keith Gibbon, even Joe Casada in there. So I'm looking forward to um, delving into that. Um, on the Conan tip, this time from Marvel, we've got the official handbook um, of the uh, Conan universe. So it's one of those um, kind of very text heavy with pictures, but it's kind of a, a rundown of the kind of stuff. Oh, there's a big map, oops, big map there um, of the kind of Conan world. And you get little kind of articles about various lands and the characters. You know the stuff. You've you've got at least one of these in your collection, I'm sure. Um, sticking with Conan, we've got issue one of Conan the Barbarian. Uh, very uh, Marvel type uh, cover there. All big muscles and barbarians, axes and swords and the like. Great stuff. Um, issue 460 of The Mighty Thor, I'm not quite sure why I picked this up, um, just a bit of fun. Got a few Thors, uh, old Thors in my collection, uh, but this is the uh, begins uh, a new era of greatness in the quest of gods. Uh, this just looked again, another fun one uh, from Roy Thomas, it's Arak, Son of Thunder. Uh, finishing the kind of odd bits, but still it's it's filling in gaps for my Daredevil run. We've got issue 293 uh, with Punisher in there. Uh, I got a little, a few um, new Avengers, the last series before um, Secret Wars all end, all started. Uh, we've got so this is the Jonathan Hickman run. We've got issue number seven. Issue number eight, and finally issue number ten for the new Avengers. Now I'm sure I've already picked this up, but it was very cheap, so hey ho if I have already got it. But issue number eight of Moon Knight, uh, the last series before Secret Wars. Again, this is another cover that I'm like, really, I'm sure I've got this, but my little uh, book said I hadn't. It's Lazarus issue number 14. This means I only need issue number 11 now to complete the run, because um, I started late on Lazarus, picking it up monthly. And finally, volume three of Silver Surfer. This is issue number 13. And that was the small comic book haul I had. So I hope you enjoyed this video with my too much information tag and that small comic book haul. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any more videos. Look out for my comic book pull list video on Wednesday. Hit the subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up. And comments down there. Have a chat. I'll reply. Bye.